Art Museum. Uh, special thanks goes out to several people before I get started. And, and one, uh, starting off with uh, Mimi Philly. Uh, Mimi was the backbone and she, she was behind this so much, uh, not only with material things, but with an outstanding worldwide art collection that this museum holds. I want to thank uh, co-executors Brittany Novotny that you just saw out here introducing me and Stan Reimer behind the behind the scenes today with the camera. I'd like to thank uh, Warren and Karen Philly for everything they keep carrying on here with the, helping with the uh, art museum. And last but not least, I'd like to thank the, the board here at the art museum. And, and it's a privilege to be here today. Uh, we're gonna get started. Uh, we're going to be talking a lot about art and education in life. And, and so with that, with the art and education, we'll be touching bases on several things for the teachers that have asked and uh, the teachers in the college and in the junior highs and middle school, uh, private schools, and uh, uh, the homeschooled teachers have asked to, to kind of insert some things with this. And so we will be doing that and uh, all through the speech. But first, we're going to be talking about some artists so you all can, can visualize tying in not only yourselves with art and education and your students with art and education, but we can all uh, tie in several different things with several different artists, which I'm gonna be talking about here shortly. So first of all, I'm going to start off with uh, Tim Joseph. Tim is uh, Fort Collins, Colorado is where Tim is. And he starts out with, a, with this bald eagle sculpture right here that is only maybe six inches tall. Well, Tim also does uh, major sculptures and you'll see those when you're driving around Denver or some major big cities in the United States and they're like 10 foot, 12 foot tall or even taller, uh, outstanding. And so there's many things that a student could do right with this. You know, a student in, uh, for example, uh, any age group, we could talk about the bald eagles. We could look up the bald eagles. Uh, we could write a paper on bald eagles. And, and this, this doesn't just go along with our, with our kids in school. This goes along with our senior citizens also. You know, instead of sitting around, we could have be involved with, with a little art and uh, the importance of art. So uh, we'll be talking about that as we go. And that's Tim Joseph. And by the way, that outstanding artist, uh, his daughter is standing right over here, uh, Brittany. Uh, so Tim and Betsy is Brittany's mom and dad. Uh, the next one I'd like to talk about is uh, Stan Reimer. Stan's over here. Uh, Stan is behind the camera. Right here is one of Stan's photos. And, you know, I, I don't have time to go over his great credentials in life. Uh, besides international awards and Kansas uh, awards, uh, I, you know, the photographer of the year. But, but I do want to tell you this little story. I'll tell you what, Nancy, my wife, retired uh, from Skyline Schools a few years ago. And, and of course, at a real early age, of course. But uh, she loved this one photo. Uh, and Stan took this photo and he spent over six hours setting to wait for the right shot, the right angle, the right sun. I mean, he was so devoted to these, this picture. And that's what we're talking about here in school, being devoted to, to, to our art, to our progress in life. So, and then uh, we have uh, Robin Laws. Robin, dear friend of ours also, she's, in, she's a Wyoming girl. And you think, wow, there's a little bunny rabbit bronze. Yes, that's true. It is a little bunny rabbit and it's bronze. But you know, Robin does life-size, life-size donkeys. And if you look out her studio window, it faces, I believe, the west. And there's the pasture with donkeys and they come up to her barn. And so she gets right with them uh, the donkeys, and you'll see those. I know a lot of people like to go through Denver and, and Aspen and Vail and Breckenridge. My goodness, oh, well, they're everywhere on the streets, uh, Robin Laws. Now, also, 
we have uh, Roger Williams. And Roger uh, just, Roger has been able to, to just paint all over the world, so many different uh, countries. And here's one of his paintings here. And I will insert this that Mimi Philly loved to collect Roger's art. And of course, we can all see why. Uh, it speaks to you so much. And there's so much history there, history teachers, that, that you could talk about right there. And then uh, we have Lori Jones. Thanks, Britt. And if you notice, they put these wires on me because I move around a lot and they're trying to hold me tight. And uh, so I don't move so much. Now, now Lori Jones, she, is, uh, she and her husband, they live kind of west of Medicine Lodge, Kansas, and it's real. She checks cattle every single day. She rides horses. And uh, she came in the barn one day and, and uh, her husband roped so much that his rope was breaking and he was, her husband was repairing the rope. And so she just sketched it out real quick. And, and uh, I love that picture. And uh, Lori Jones, Marie Hansen. Marie, she has been also one of the uh, members from day one, along with Stan and several others here in the community that, that worked with Mimi and, and then Brittany, of course. And, uh, but Marie was one of those from the start, too, with the Vernon Philly Art Museum. And I, I love her, her poppies right here. It comes from the heart. Uh, and and that's, that's part of art. And so I, I love to talk about Marie's art. Lynn Fenwick. Uh, We'll focus in on her book and not, not me as much. Now, now Lynn's book, uh, I saw this down here at the uh, Philly Art Museum. And uh, I, so I bought that for Nancy, Nancy and Nancy loves to read Lynn's material and so, does, so do I. So I, I gave that to Nancy, but I was, I was really preparing for stuff here and getting ready and, and, and welding Tommy Hawks and, and really behind on some schedule on welding. So I haven't read the book. And so I said, honey, I was talking about Nancy. Uh, I, I said, uh, tell me some stuff about the book. She looks at me like, hello, you read the book. And, and so I said, tell me a little bit. She said, well, it talks about a bachelor. It talks about history. It talks about Stafford County, Pratt County and the Larned area. And uh, she, she said how the bachelor moved into the community. And, and that's all I'm gonna tell you. And I said, okay. It sounds great to me. I will take time and read that. Uh, uh, it, it's all of Lynn's works outstanding. Now, people, right here in Pratt, Kansas, the Vernon Philly Art Museum, you can buy a book like this. You can buy our artwork. You can buy some pictures, uh, some sketches from Lori. You, you can buy a, a Roger Williams, uh, some paintings from him. Stan Reimer, you can buy some of those. Uh, Marie, everyone I've talked about, you can buy, Timmy Joseph, you can buy it right here. So, well, I thought you were gonna talk about art and education. I'm giving you a background because right now we have a book with history. We, we talk about cowboys. We talk about right here with Roger Williams with some of his art and, and uh, Santa Fe history, Santa Fe, New Mexico history. We talk about poppies and Marie with the oil paintings, you know, and we also have watercolors in here. We have uh, this guy, if, if Stan, if you wouldn't mind and just kind of give him a little glimpse of this little studio that offers so much and there's more besides here. Uh, this gift shop uh, it was, Mimi always loved to come into the gift shop and see little different things. And this gift shop offers so much. Uh, and artists, I apologize. I couldn't mention everybody's name, so I do apologize for that. And uh, we'll keep moving forward. Okay, uh, we're going to kind of jump in to th think. Think, if you have the book, The Art of Self-Inspiration, if you have this book, what's up? It's found on page 32. And there again, you can buy this book right here at the Philly Art Museum. Think. Right down at the bottom, you can get your students involved. 
by one version is that you crawl through and you get a glimpse of life. You can peek through the top and you just peek at life, but you only see a 180 degree view. You have to be able to go through the door and then you see life. That's one quick version. Here's my ver another version. When you're a little, you learn to crawl through the openings. I know Nancy's niece, Lindsay, she, they have a, a young little girl, a little baby, well, she's a couple of years old, but, but she loves to crawl and, and learning to walk. And, and at this stage of life, you crawl through and then you kind of get a low view of life trying to look up. And then you peek through things. When you start to crawl, you're climbing on things, you peek through them. And I've seen so many pictures of Mathis, uh, Brittany's little boy, and uh, peeking through things. And then when you get a little older, you finally walk through life, walk in, and that can be in school, uh, that can be just in life in general. And you know what? A lot of times when people go through life and they've already gone through a lot of their life and they're senior citizens, they have a lot of resources, facts, and history for each one of you. And, and it comes through the art. And so uh, you can also rely on the senior citizens. Now, when I say students of, and students in life, I'm talking about everyone in life. Uh, our students in life are senior citizens. I love them dearly, and they're so valuable with all their resources. Now, when we do art or we function uh, with art, it does so many things. In school, a lot of people will say, well, uh, football helps my kid go to school and keep good grades. Well, that's probably true with some. Now, art can do the same thing. If you have kind of a little bit of a behavior issue, uh, now, that can be in the senior citizen's home, or that can be in grade school. Uh, you know, the arts will help to bring that out. I normally don't mention this, but I'm going to, I'm going to insert something that I know none of you have heard. Uh, I taught metal art welding. Now, here's what I did, my requirements. But I, I love the students, before my requirements, I love the students they either quit school, they didn't want school, they didn't want anything to do with it, and they were in trouble. I took those kids and I started out with four. I went to 22, and here's how I did it. Before you weld, we're gonna learn safety. So we have to learn to read and things like that. We're gonna learn safety, then we're gonna weld. Now, before we make anything in metal art, you're gonna pick someone. You're gonna pick someone like Picasso. You're going to the library. I never said the, the computer internet, I said the library. You're going to the library, you're gonna look it up. Picasso, you're gonna write me a three page typed out uh, material on Picasso. So we understand a little bit about where he was coming from and with the art. And then we chose different ones before you ever did. Well, Bixler, that will never work. I'll tell you, I know it does work. And those kids were so involved in the welding part that they would do the English, the history, the writing, the math, they would do that. And you didn't have to keep telling them. They would do it because they love to have, be affiliated with art. And, and some of my best students, uh, they were a little rough. <laughs> I'll just leave it that way. And they turned out so well. So think it can it can be used at, uh, right here in our retirement homes it can be used right in our school to get those kids motivated and get them going and then we have i think the next one was oh it's the uh, the horse reflection mirror and uh what i like about the notice the horse you, you have their eye and, and stands zooming in on the just the horse so you can really pay attention to the horse it's, you know, his eye, when you look in his eye, you see your eye. Now the mane, okay, that can be look like mine when I took off my mask a while ago, my hair might be all messed up, but it might be blowing in the wind, but the horse is moving. So the head is held high, represents what? Achievements from the past. 
and looking forward to the challenges of the future. And it reflects uh, something powerful, proud, he's holding his head high, confident in each moment of life. That's what we all need. Now, he's ready and willing to achieve the goals for the day, not to worry about the past events, or even, he doesn't even think about the threats of the future or the calamities. He is in the moment. Nobody is messing him up. Okay, That's, and then with that reflection, you can see the self-esteem and the confidence and the challenges that he's going to face. And it could be a, a filly or a mare, or so it could be he or she. So that is our horse reflection mirror. Now I'm gonna to go to one more piece and then I'm gonna ask if there's any questions. And Brittany has handed me a notebook already of all sorts of questions that people have called in. So we're gonna go over here to write the sands of life. And, and people I'm really trying to, they're really trying to keep me where I don't walk back and forth and move every direction, but that's hard to do is to control me. And so, Stan, you can you get right on you? Okay, Stan's got on there already. And you know what? The sands of life is like hands. I'm really, people, I'm trying to stay out of it because I want you to focus on this. The sands are like your hand. And then they go through your hand. And the sands are slipping through sometimes. When they go through your hand, are you moving around? And, and it's just sprinkling the sands? Or are you trying to form a sculpture or a presence that people see that was important to them during their lifetime? Because we all know at some point in time, this is gonna run out. So just like the sands, if you're trying to hold them in your hand, it's gonna run out sometimes. So hopefully the sands you know, slipping through our hands form a sculpture. We hope they do that. And, uh, it, you know, this represents our, our, our time and our talents. So it's, it's very important. Each grand of, of sand is self-worth. It's strength. It's stability. It's honesty. It's respect. If you don't have all of those in this, you're not going to form anything down there. You're going to scatter in the wind and no one is going to remember you. But when you take it and you let your sands form a sculpture, you want it because I know so many people that you want people to remember you as someone good. And, and, and that is in, in, with all your dignity. So that's our sands. Now I'm going to ask if we have some questions right at the moment. Moving my wire back. Okay. The what? Okay, well, I'll go to that now. Well, I still have more to talk about. I'm not done. Okay. Am I supposed to be done? No, you're good. Okay. So 1223. Okay, okay. Let's just unplug it and see if I can hear the question. Okay, let's let's find out. <laughs> We had to change microphones here. So any any questions before he goes on to the next segment? We just want to make sure that you guys have a chance to chime in here. We'll skip to my call-in ones okay. if you want. Okay, I have here what you gave me a while ago. <laughs> and I do have, okay. I'll plug you back in so you can announce them. Okay. Okay, Brittany gave me some questions from call-ins. So at the last minute, I, I, I hope we mentioned it to Stan, we pulled in the sunflower. And uh, can we do, you may move this, are you okay or? Okay. Uh, so, okay, the question was, why did you make the sunflower? Well, okay, what I like about the sun, I think that's the only question, is we can learn from mother nature. What does the sunflower do? It always faces the sun, always. So you have darkness behind you. 
And that's what life's about, how we can always face, we hold our head high, just like the, the horse with the reflection mirror. And we, we hold our head high and we always face the sun. And so, and you know, that sun can also represent a glimmer of light from friends or family. It just doesn't have to always be light. And then at the last moment, we had uh, the a call in about, well, you did a new one with the hand and football. What, what's the hand and the football about? What was their question? Let's see, Stan, am I on the wrong side? Okay, the question was, Okay, how and why did I did I have the football? What is what does the football represent, and what are some components? Okay, uh, lots of practice involves what? In, if we're going to throw a for a touchdown pass, it takes lots of practice. Well, who's going to block us and help us protect us while we're throwing the pass in life? And in life, we don't always just want a pass that, that is a touchdown. We want to move forward. So uh, with that, we have to have someone block us, someone catch the ball, and then they have to run. We have to have somebody that's going to throw the ball. Now, how do we as students of life, how do we, how do, we do this? How do we... How do we write a paper on this? Tell me how you do that, Bixler. Well, if the quarterback at this time, which might be you, if you are going to throw a pass, you hope that you work well enough with your family members, with your friends, that they're going to block for you. But that's how are they going to do that? How am I going to work well enough? Well, if, when you're honest, you show respect, and you treat people equally, well, then it's not hard for people to block for you. Now you need a receiver in life. And you know, a lot of times a receiver in life, that can be your wife, that can be your friend, that can be your kids, that can be the teacher, you know? And, and they catch the ball in life and then you keep running with the ball. You know, a lot of times we don't make a touchdown, guys. We don't but at least we keep moving forward and we try and we show respect and we help others. That's what that one is about. And we had to bring that, this one in at the last second because it was requested by several and several students. And so they wanted to see the football arm. So we just finished that one. And uh, any questions yet? I don't want to just, I don't want you to hang, hang up and say, well, he didn't ask any questions. Any questions? Any questions? I'm not seeing anybody flag me or anything. I'm not seeing anyone unmute. So I think you're good to keep going. We'll give some time at the end, too, for questions. Okay. Sounds great. Well, right before the virus, because this was one of the questions that was on the, on the notepad, uh, Yes, uh, when we shut down a year ago in March, uh, we had 22 schools and 17 churches, I believe I have that right, that were in line to come through our art barn. Now our art barn, right on the edge of town, I'm gonna to see if Stan can get into this to see our art barn and see if I do it halfway right. This is a spur of the moment, Stan didn't know this until right now. And so uh, our art barn, just right on the edge of town, we, use, we have this art barn and we have educational tours come through. And my wife, Nancy, our golden doodle ace, we talk about each of our uh, sculptures. And with those, we talk about how it relates to you in life. And so uh, it's our art barn. Uh, we're looking forward to opening it back up uh, real quick, like within the next month. And in May, we're going to set Barry Ward up on the uh, balcony of this or the front porch. Uh, there is the front porch on this is 780 square feet of cement and under roof. And then uh, he will set up there. And he, of course, he's been in the uh, Grand Ole Opry and, and uh, 
several several places singing uh, and so he's going to do the concert and we'll have an open concert out into the field now also we in this we have uh for the schools and different people coming through the question has been how big is this and well the one side is 980 square feet and the other side uh, we just finished it it's brand new brand new uh, it is 550 feet, and uh, then we have that 700 and some feet outside on cement and under roof for parties and gatherings and to view our art. Okay, that's enough about that. I answered that question. So then, any questions yet? Okay. Well, with, with the art, it is so important to me with art and, you know, and my wife with Nancy being a uh, teacher that's re retired, how important it is to keep people motivated, to keep people uh, help with behavior issues. And the arts can do that, guys. The arts can do that. And uh, so just we just tie it in. And everything we've talked about, it's kind of fast, but some of you know, I wanted to make sure most of you got to hear everything before you had to leave to go to work or wherever. You know, this art, it just helps kids and it helps senior citizens also. And it helps our education with history, sociology, speech, psychology, you name it, math, it is all right there. And uh, that's, what, that's what we're here for. And we just want to help. And so in a minute, uh, Britt is going to tell me, hopefully, about, uh, uh, she's looking at, the, there's three people that uh, have uh, won a book, and uh, she's doing the tallies, and, and uh, we're going we're gonna, to uh, uh, draw uh, for the book. But, and we think we have everybody's name and, and we would, would probably need your address if you're out of town. Now, speaking of out of town, <clears throat> uh, I don't know. I think, aren't we, didn't we have a Tommy Hawk on the, uh, on our Facebook or something? Yeah, we just did some Tommy Hawks. And I do want to welcome and thank you for viewing today. I do want to welcome the Canyon View Omnish. Uh, furniture gallery they're in Deadwood South Dakota and they're going to have they're going to be uh, selling a lot of our Tommy Hawks in that area and they're going to be dis dispersing our art up there in that area so we're looking forward to working with Gary up there and so but I'm just it's blessed that I could talk with you guys today. I'm blessed to be around so many artists and so many caring people. And Brittany wants me to draw a name. Draw three names. Draw three names. Let's see if I can do this. If they wouldn't keep me all tied up, it would be. Uh, okay, here we go. Is it Carl? Carol. Carol. We have Carol. And who's this, Billy's? Now, now, Brittany writes well, she does, but she was kind of in a hurry. And then you gotta remember, if I don't know what, if I don't know what it says, she has to answer it. Okay, and then whoop, whoop, there's one here that's kind of stuck, and let's see, it's Tim. All right, all right, we're, this is great. This is great. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna mail you a book. Or we'll have it here at the Philly for you to pick up. And uh, the next time you're in, you don't have to make a special trip. But uh, guys, it, it's, it's a blessing to be able to work with the Philly because this museum, I'm, I'm putting it up with, it could be in, in St. Louis. It could be in Denver. And uh, uh, we're just so blessed in this community to have it. We're so blessed with community members around that also contribute and help with this uh, to keep it here and and just tie it in with your education, guys. And, okay, we have uh, we have questions.
Okay, we have a couple comments on the feed here. Marie says, thank you for mentioning my oil painting. You're the best. <laughs> and Quist uh, sent a message to everybody. It says, how has making art helped you get through the challenges brought on by the pandemic? And he says, thanks for the great talk. Oh, yeah, your brother. Quest, I appreciate that question. And uh, uh, the arts have gotten me through life for a long time. And uh, even growing up, my mother was, uh, she did beautiful uh, oil paintings. And I always enjoyed that. And it would be kind of like when you're a little kid and you kind of want to get away from everybody. You go out to the barn. I was raised in the farm. I'm a country boy, but you'd go out to the barn and play. Well, you know, when you get a little older, I could, I could do that with the art. It just kind of, uh, kind of escape, I guess. And, uh, that's one version. I have many of what I do quest, but, uh, how did the, did the virus affect? Well, it, it did it affected some of the galleries and, and that we're in and some of the areas we're in and uh, it did affect some on that now we were very blessed and our studio uh, i kept welding most of the time and doing our art pieces and so it hasn't slowed that part down and uh, we've done a lot of furniture and and, uh, and we're going to display that furniture uh, before too long uh, we're going to introduce that quest. So, so we've kept very busy uh, welding. We really have. But thank you for that question. Okie dokie. Suzanne says, thank you for the great talk. A wonderful way to spend the lunch hour. Um, Carol says that she actually has one of your books already. So go ahead and draw an, another name. <laughs> uh, draw another name. Okay. <laughs> she already has a book. She already has it. A... Okay. Let's see. I have... Diane? Yeah, Diane. Diane. Okay, super. Okay. Okay. And and really and truly, I guess the last thing why Brittany's looking over any other questions, the last thing I'd like to comment on is that, you know, it doesn't matter if, if it's our kids in school, colleges, or if it's our retirement centers, you know, art gives happiness to everyone and it helps with the arts will help. Like I said, it doesn't have to be metal. And it, you know what? Some, you know, I did have one question that, that was asked and I about forgot it. What happens if we can't weld? We can't weld in the, and this was a real nice lady in a retirement center. What happens if we can't weld? Well, this was for you. <laughs> you can do clay, you know, that's, uh, you know, and I never said I was great with clay, but see, we could do the clay version and then you don't have to weld. So about forgot that one. The what? Oh, okay. Okay. That was another question Brittany said was asked, how do I do my art? Uh, what do I, how do I draw it up or what? Here's what I do. Here's the, here's what I, I, I come in and I have right here. If I get to do, do that. And then I would have a little area over here and an area over here, and I'd have the door up on top. And then that's that's how I do that with, with mine. It's all on metal. Now, I don't correct that 15 times. I won't do it. I take the piece of metal and I correct it when I'm cutting. I don't want it measured perfectly. I don't want everything just so, I'll just cut. And the way it comes out is the way it comes out. Okay. And I'm okay. In, in closing, I guess, if there's not any more questions, I did have one more piece that, that I, I had a call and, and they said, What about the swing, the little swing? And I said, Okay, I will talk about it briefly. You know, we real quick, a lot of times in life, we have things happen to us along the way. Sometimes we have a broken leg and, and or, or we've been in an accident and that leg won't work real well, but we still have one more leg. And you know, a lot of times in life we go around and around in a circle. That can be with our kids, that can be with school, that can be with anything, we go in a circle. And what you need to do, life, 
life is so important to each of us through the arts, whoops, through the arts, what you need to do is get, break away from the busy part of going around in a circle and worrying about how much you're going to make and how much you're going to do and take some time out, get in the swing, swing up and down and enjoy life. And, and you know what, when you're doing that, you might be like a, a Stan Reimer and see some real pretty clouds and you all at once stop and you take a picture. You might be like a Lori Jones and you see something really cool out front and you stop and you sketch that picture, you know? So anyway, that's the short version on that. I probably have taken too long and I apologize if I have. So I'll try to wrap it up. If any other, we don't have any more questions, thank you so much for joining us here at the Philly Art Museum. Listen, guys, uh, I'm serious. I've been in a lot of galleries. Nancy and I have traveled so much, and we've been in a lot of galleries and museums. You need us. If you haven't ever been here, you need to stop in uh, and see the beautiful artwork. Thank you. We want to thank you all again for attending. It was really nice to have a great crowd on here. And we are going to uh, leave you here with a slideshow. If you missed it, it's just a little slideshow of some of Bixler's work and some of him uh, welding in the studio and some of the artists that he featured in our gift shop. So enjoy this if you'd like. And again, thanks for coming. Jody Suter says, thank you. We appreciate the excitement, symbolism, and witnessing your work. Um, you've got lots of nice comments on here. Thanks for the fun and interesting Zoom. So again, thanks everybody. Stay tuned because we hope to be welcoming groups back into the museum with masks and social distancing very, very soon. And uh, I have we'll a question. With this uh, great slideshow here. Thanks again, everybody.
and it figures me. I forgot to push record in the beginning, so I started to feel a little late, so this part got cut off in the beginning. He's writing an article for the Tribune, so I need to get it all in the book. Thank you.